It's coming towards the boat! Quick! Battling a super sea beast and its killer sword. Fast! All ahead full! All ahead full! Oh, what a fish! Oh! Okay. A lot of life, Wrestling right? a whopper yeah, ray like with a venomous whip. Visit job, visit. I see in the reef. Be careful of the sting, right? Wrangling 600 volts of electrifying eel. I was about to fall in the water with the eel because just the sheer force of it pulling me in. And a surprise showdown with a prehistoric chainsaw. Oh it just swings around, and if it hits anything, it's going to dig in very, very deep. In extreme encounters of angler versus mega predator, these underwater hunters wield lethal arsenals. It's hooked deadly weapons. Whoa. Oh my god. Super predators rule the depths with extreme and dangerous adaptations. Swords built to kill flesh-spearing venom barbs, electric charges strong as tasers. Beyond biting teeth, these are the killer arsenals of the deep. And for some extreme fishermen, taking on these alpha hunters is the ultimate thrill, a battle of man versus armed monsters. There he is. Whoa. The ocean's alpha hunters have ancestors ripped from science fiction with deadly weapons to match. Meet the monstrous in world of beat in the first fucking industry. Hey, it's me and Zuck. Nick and the sea, they're some of the ocean's scariest saber-wielding predators. Swordfish. For one angler, a 50-year obsession to battle a record breaker turns into the fight of his life. Take it ahead! May 27, 2003, the Bay of Islands, northern New Zealand. In one of the most remote fishing meccas on earth, devoted amateur angler Jerry Garrett sets out with his fishing buddy Jeff Stone and Jeff's girlfriend Heather. Their target? Whopper swordfish. Since Jerry's first swordfish catch in 1950-ish on Earth. Very powerful fish, and one that is the quest of every big game. It has all the characteristics of almost impossibility. It's a cross between a marlin and a big bluefin tuna. Combine the two and then give it a dose of steroids and a, and a six month course in the gym, and then put a hook in it and try to stop it. 15 million year old evolutionary powerhouses, swordfish can grow nearly 15 feet long, weighing almost three quarters of a ton. Fast as cars, they can swim up to 50 miles an hour. But their most fearsome weapon is their sword-like snout. This jagged jutting blade is actually an extended jawbone. Stretching about a third of a swordfish's body length, their lethal bills can jut as long as five feet. With a rounded tip, the blade's top side flattens out much like a bird's beak, creating sharp edges. Incredibly, swordfish have no teeth. To hunt, they rely entirely on their swords. Basically swimming into a group of fish, slashing it from side to side, and any of the fish may become stunned or cut or injured like that, at which point the swordfish can swim back and eat them at its leisure. And when the hunter becomes the hunted, a swordfish's bill is a powerful defensive weapon. If you're a shark trying to attack a swordfish and you're getting slashed and stabbed at, then you're going to think twice about attacking. Yet not long ago, these tenacious predators nearly disappeared from the planet. In the 1990s, swordfish populations reached dangerous lows. Global conservation has helped the fish recover. Today, swordfish are on the rebound, 
Using responsible practices, adventure anglers can once again test their strength and skill against these sword-wielding hunters. Now in the boat, Jerry Garrett and his team head deeper into swordfish territory. Come on, y'all, back and get the thing in. They catch local skipjack for bait. You ready? Ready. Okay, to reach a swordfish lair, Jerry targets an area more than 1,500 feet below the boat. You're getting close to the stern, Jeff. Give us the yell when you get to 500, Doug. How deep is it on the gauge? 500. Oh, uh, we stopped. Something's happening. All right. He feels a powerful tug. I got him hooked now. It's a bite. I lost all the weight. From the weight and pull of it, Jerry thinks it's a swordfish. Pull your drag up and make The angler jumps into the fighting chair. Fast! All ahead full! All ahead full! This is getting awful close to Heather works Jerry. frantically, keep trying warning, to get baited warning, lines out of the way. Okay, let's get this other bait up out of the water. But the catch right, has other plans. Something's wrong. I don't have enough it's weight on it. It's the boat. Quick, we don't want it under the Take boat. Take it ahead. Take I it ahead. I've got the other line out of the motor. Take it too. ahead. Wait, come on. Jerry's plan is to tire the fish. Yet as he fights, the angler worries the fish may tire him. The fish was very strong. The difficulty of landing them after a period of time having the stamina to stay with the fight. Stamina is only one of Jerry's worries. At any moment, the fish could slash the line with its blade. The leader is, of course, very taunt at that point because of the amount of pressure that I had on the line. So it made an easy target to be sawed through. Keep going, Jerry. Keep going. Keep going. As the fisherman fights to stay hooked, he has no idea how big his catch is. Jerry and his team manage to keep the taut fishing line intact. Okay, we got the double. Yeah, he's giving it up. He's just floating there. He's just sitting there. But now, deep into hour 13, Jerry's struggling to stay alert. Incredibly, the exhausted angler reels against the fish for another hour and 20 minutes. He still hasn't had a glimpse of his powerful opponent in the flesh. Then, in a sudden burst, an enormous sword slices through the water. Holy guacamole, what a fish! The team is stunned. Oh, what a fish! It's the biggest swordfish any of them have Keep ever going. seen. Keep going. We're almost at the nylon. Its slashing weapon is close enough to touch. Give me the gaff, Heather. Give me the gaff. Okay, give me the gaff. Give me the gaff. Holy guacamole. That's when things were very exciting and yelling, and I got out of the chair, unbuckled myself from the fishing tackle, and grabbed the sword. Grabbing hold of a swordfish bill is extremely dangerous. In addition to flesh-cutting bony edges, swordfish bills are covered in septic bacteria. Jerry's ultimate catch is in reach. But the real battle against the swordfish and its deadly weapon has just begun. The fish swung the head and knocked me across the cockpit got it, into got the it, side. Got it. Oh! I just sat there and said, well, I'm not going to try that again. Seeing it up close, the Whopper billfish stretches longer than a surfboard. He's big, all right. Jerry thinks it may be a record breaker. Let's get out of here. But it's too large and dangerous to pull on board. Yep, plugging it off. The team decides to tow it to the nearest harbor. Steaming into their home port, Jerry's 50-year obsession is at stake. We came into the wharf with my flag flying that I bought in 1959 when I caught my first swordfish. And we proceeded with the weigh-in process. The catch stats are stunning. The swordfish weighs 813 pounds, stretching 12.8 feet long. It's a world record. 
to be able to actually land one of some size is a feat that very few worldwide big game anglers have accomplished. 14 hours and 20 minutes behind those controls is really a lot longer than I wanted to be there, but just great, just, just mind blowing. One of the deadliest underwater weapons is literally shocking, electricity. Many fish can detect electric fields, but only a few can generate a powerful field of their own. Species look truly petrifying. Helicoprion. This 300 million year old monster may have used its jaw like a tooth covered lasso. Today, there's another jaw dropping fish on the prowl. Combine shark, stingray, and swordfish into one astounding hunter, and it can only be the sawfish. This bizarre behemoth sports one of the ocean's strangest looking weapons. But as sawfish fight for species survival, one extreme catch turns into a rescue mission. Oh. May 26, 2009, Fort Myers, Florida. Eddie Alsop, his wife Jessica, and friend Matt McCarran are fanatic amateur anglers. They usually catch local fish like tarpon, but today they're about to encounter an elusive ancient beast. I've been here my entire life. I've known lots of people that go fishing, and there's only a handful of people that ever have seen a sawfish. Meet a mega predator that dates back 50 million years. The biggest sawfish can stretch longer than 20 feet, weighing as much as a great white shark, over two tons. A bizarre blend of different species, sawfish are some of the most unique hunters on the planet. Technically, they're actually rays, like stingrays, but they look more like sharks or a flattened shark, except that the snout has been drawn out into a saw shape with teeth running up and down the side. Basically, it looks like a giant shark with a chainsaw attached to it. Surprisingly, this striking chainsaw blade works as both a weapon and an antenna. The blade is called a rostrum, and these tooth-like structures are in large scales known as dermal denticles. The entire rostrum is actually covered with dermal denticles and sensors called electroreceptors. The receptors pick up signals from living prey. Once a sawfish senses prey, it goes in for the kill. It can use the saw to go through a school of fish and slash it back and forth, and then it can go back and eat any of the fish that it may have killed or injured. Sawfish get so big, they have few predators. But if attacked, their saw becomes a defensive dagger. This is probably one of the reasons that the adults are not usually attacked by sharks. It can actually turn around and defend itself. Yet these prehistoric survivors are highly threatened, listed as critically endangered. In the last century, it's estimated the world's sawfish population has declined 95%. The greatest danger to sawfish are actually fishing nets. Because of all the teeth, they accidentally swim into the net, get all tangled up, and it is incredibly difficult to get them out because they're big, powerful fish thrashing around. And usually the sawfish doesn't survive the encounter, at least historically, because it was just easier and safer for the fishermen to kill the sawfish. In the U.S. and Australia, it's illegal to catch or kill sawfish. To help populations rebound, biologists are in a race to understand sawfish behavior and migration. Fishermen are instructed to report any sawfish encounters and to cut the line free immediately, safely releasing these endangered predators at all costs. But as these Florida fishing buddies head out on the ocean, no one's expecting a sawfish encounter. Jessica and Matt have landed a few tarpon, and now a large hammerhead shark is circling. Wow, look at that, look at that hammerhead. Oh my God, it's huge. It's huge. Awesome. Fish on, hey, fish, fish on. on, fish on. Grab it, grab it, you're up, you're up, buddy. Eddie gets a bite. Hopefully it's that big hammerhead. Yeah, he it's a big by. fish. He just went by. Oh my gosh, yep, I'm gonna need jump. a belt. He assumes it's the hammerhead, 
but as he straps on his fighting belt, he's shocked at what he feels. We're gonna catch a great shark! Oh, compared to other fish, it was very strong. It was like fighting a Mack truck. The fish is so forceful, it's stripping line faster than Eddie can stop it. The angler has no idea he's hooked a prehistoric predator that's about to wield its weapon. Hopefully it's that big hammerhead. After setting out for a typical day's fishing, Eddie and Jessica Alsop and fishing buddy Matt McCarran are battling an unknown Goliath. I had to put both my thumbs on the reel to stop it from taking all my line off. If it would have run out of line, it would have snapped the line. We would have lost the fish. Eddie's convinced it's bigger than any fish he's ever encountered. As soon as he gains a few feet of line, the powerful whopper yanks it back. He's burning me again. Feels like a big old, big old fish. 30 minutes into the fight, the beast changes strategy. It starts circling, getting closer to the boat. Hey, he's coming around the boat. Here he comes. Come back around the boat. Don't get hooked up on that motor. Walk to the back. Walk to the back. Good job, babe. Good job. The angler races across decks, he's trying to keep the, the fish free from the anchor line and the motor. Right, here he goes. He's going back to the front now. Then something strange happens. It went down and laid on the bottom, and I really had a hard time getting him to move off the bottom. He was like stuck like a big rock. Eddie's baffled. What he thought was a hammerhead is now acting like a stingray. No, I think it's locked on the bottom right now. I can't get him to move. Bring him up. Eddie's anxious to see what he's hooked. With a massive heave, he reels the catch to the surface. I've almost got him. He's coming up. Oh, we're going to pick this thing up soon. Get the f out. Oh my god! It's a big one! It's one of the most fearsome weapons the anglers have ever seen. This giant saw lifted out of the water, and it was huge. It was a monster. It was a, like a dinosaur pulling a dinosaur out of the water. And if it just swings around, and if it hits anything, it's going to dig in very, very deep. Holy Oh my god! Uh, we need to get this line. They've hooked a Goliath sawfish. This is the coolest thing ever. It's a massive one, too. Comparing the catch to the boat, the team estimates the prehistoric beast stretches roughly 15 feet. Its serrated saw blade alone jutting four feet. Holy The saw itself is very impressive, and it's very dangerous. It's just like a shark's tooth sticking out sideways. Oh, my gosh. He is amazing. Oh my God! Uh -oh, the anglers know they must release the sawfish swiftly and safely without landing it. But to do it, they have to tangle with its weapon. I touched them, Matt. You want to touch it? Here, here's these pliers, Jess. Hand him the pliers. Matt grabs a pair of pliers and gets as close to the sawfish as he dares. Cut that! You gotta use the side thing. Jessica and Eddie watch Matt's every move. I didn't want nobody to get hurt, so it was very, very scary. Matt targets the fishing line at the base of the saw blade. With a fast flick, he severs the line. Good release. This guy's gonna go live another hundred years. Oh my God! I don't even know. The sawfish is. swims free. Oh my God! Woo! Holy cow! Oh my God. The coolest thing about let, catching a sawfish is to let it go and watch it swim away. That is the coolest thing. For the three anglers, battling the prehistoric predator was unforgettable. Few people on Earth have ever seen a sawfish or its phenomenal weapon in the wild. Today, the remarkable rare encounter serves as a reminder of the ultimate challenge of man versus weapon wielding fish. Human development, climate change, overfishing and pollution threaten these amazingly adapted alpha hunters. So the key to saving these remarkably designed fish is doing research to figure out what the problems are, what's impacting them, driving their numbers down, and then saving their habitat so they have a place to live, and then trying to put into play some type of regulations to curb overfishing so that we're not overharvesting them. Only through continued research, habitat conservation, and sustainable fishing can we save some of evolution's most incredible killer adaptations and 
the water's most amazing predators. It's hooked deadly weapons. And one is an apex predator. Tough to find and even tougher to catch, its lethal weapon is measured in voltage. The electric eel. For one daring angler, wrangling this electrifying beast is the ultimate Amazon adventure. May 15th, 2010. Amazon base in Peru. Deep in the rainforest, Anthony Giardinelli runs an expedition lodge. Anthony leads clients through the untamed jungle. But for him, one of the most extreme tests of skill is the hunt for the electric eel. Randy, desata la soga. Vamos a agarrar este pez eléctrico. Able to grow more than six feet long, weighing over 40 pounds, surprisingly, electric eels aren't actually eels. They're part of the knifefish group, species named for their sleek, blade-like bodies. Yet in the jungle, these elusive, electrifying predators are more often mistaken for killer snakes. If you're not looking really good, if you're not really close and you see it, you could easily confuse it for something like an anaconda. But unlike anacondas, the electric eel kills with a shocking weapon. The prey of the electric eel is zapped by the electricity, at which point the muscles and nerves all start firing and go into a contraction, which basically paralyzes the fish. Electric eels electrify themselves, literally turning their bodies on and off. Inside the eel, Flat disc-like cells called electrocytes carry electrical charges. To activate them, all it takes is the right conductor, salt. By controlling the levels of salt coursing through their muscles, electric eels work like living batteries. The bigger the beast, the more lethal the charge. The largest specimens can generate as much as 650 volts. Wielding their weapon like a taser, electric eels stun fish, amphibians, even birds, and small mammals. Once they've stunned their prey, they swallow it whole. And even more remarkable is what they can do to predators. They can deliver shocks for an hour or more if they need to, so even if a crocodile or a large catfish or something else is trying to attack it and thinks it can wait it out, that's not going to work. The electric eel can defend itself for long periods of time. Electric eels never deliberately attack people, yet accidental contact can kill. The biggest danger from an electric eel is getting into the water, getting zapped, falling unconscious, and then drowning. There's a lot of drowning deaths in the Amazon are blamed on electric eels. For Anthony and his co-worker Randy Kawachi, the thrill of the catch outweighs any danger. The men head towards a nearby tributary, a known electric eel habitat. Electric eels are notoriously difficult to detect. These ambush predators instinctively hide under river vegetation. the team locates their target spot. But to position themselves, they have to hack their way with a machete. The anglers use two strategies. They lower the bait under dense plants, and they agitate the surface to attract attention. But hours go by with no bite.
Anthony decides to change location, moving deeper into the tributary. To get there, the men must hike into the jungle. At a secluded stream, Anthony and Randy bait and tickle the surface with their fishing poles. Randy, no hay nada por ahí. Nada todavía. In a sudden rush, a fish bursts out of the leaves and grabs onto Anthony's hook. The gigante pez eléctrico. It's a giant electric eel. Ooh, tiene dos metros, Randy. Randy, mira. No, 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 no. Come on. The electric eel has an extraordinary fighting strategy. The other fish swim away with the hook in their mouth going away from you. This was was corkscrewing away with his head here pulling out and it was just very strong. Many fish can undulate their bodies, but this Amazon giant can actually contort itself like a rope. When it found some trees that were still in the water, it would wrap around the trees and use that as leverage to keep pulling away. It felt literally like you're tugging with another rope. With so much dense vegetation, the line could easily sever or tangle. Anthony has to reel in the catch as fast as possible. Swimming fast, the eel changes direction. Anthony struggles to keep the writhing fish hooked and follow it on the muddy ground. To ward off an electric charge, the angler wears protective rubber waders. But in the slippery mud, he must be careful. He's only five feet from the agitated eel. As the fight continues, if Anthony falls, he could get zapped by 600 volts. Just the sheer force of it pulling me into the small channel. I was about to fall in with the eel. 